So what did Chris Jones tweet today? We'll dive into the Twitter feed of Chris Jones. Plus, take a look at some training camp winners and losers as camp is officially in the books. But before we dive into all of that, help us out. Subscribe to the channel for Daily Chiefs news, rumors, more coverage as well throughout the preseason and on into the regular season. And Chiefs Kingdom, I'm challenging you. We need 20 new subscribers today. It's 100% free, so help us out. I'm Harrison Graham here on the Chiefs Report. Training camp is officially over as today was technically the final training camp practice out in St. Joseph. And we're going to take a look at who the biggest camp winners and losers were. Now, obviously, there will be practices before the third preseason game and, of course, week one. But those will not be deemed training camp practices. Fans will not be attending. So training camp has come and gone very, very quickly. Let's jump into these winners and losers, though. Justin Ross, who... Bree left the practice earlier this week, and we were, like, concerned. Oh, with his injury history, that could be a problem. But he was right back at it the next day, and that was great to see, to see him respond like that. And I just think with the way he's been able to go through this camp, staying healthy, making plays, both with the ones and the twos, like, he just simply needs to make this team. Like, he's earned it. He's playing well. He's 6'4", 210, had a sick Back toe tap touchdown in practice the other day. Also had a touchdown in the preseason opener uh, against the New Orleans Saints when he caught a couple of passes for 29 yards and a touchdown. You could just see how happy he and his teammates were for him as well. The talent has never been a problem with this kid. It's been the injury history, which we've documented here on the Chiefs report going back to a uh, spinal fusion surgery a few years ago at Clemson. Had a foot surgery last offseason, uh, which uh, had the Chiefs put him on IR. But I think he's earned a spot on this roster. I think he deserves to be here. And quite frankly, I think he could be a playmaker for this team this year. Like, I don't think it's one of those he makes the team and never plays. Like, I actually think uh, Justin Ross can do some things in 2023. So I'm excited about that. Uh, I think he will be on the 53-man roster. I've told you guys at times throughout the week that I am stepping aside from the Chiefs report, and we can now officially announce who the new host is, and that is Jace Andrews. He put this up on his Twitter feed. Uh, he's going to take over. Uh, I'm excited about that he's going to bring a fresh voice and energy to this channel if this is the first time you're aware of me stepping down I'm still going to be at chat sports the main reasons are I am able to take a step further in my career uh, on the managerial side I'm still going to do on-air stuff I still cover the Bears for those of you who know that if you don't I do that as well here at chat sports I'll be on some other channels but with my uh, increased role in management duties it just wasn't possible to give my full attention to the Chiefs report so I said hey let's let's step aside we came to that agreement and Jace is going to take over and he's fired up he's going to bring some youth and energy to this channel and since Send him a warm welcome, if you would. Uh, he's at Jace Andrews underscore on Twitter. You see the handle right there. Go give him a follow and tweet Chiefs Kingdom at him. He doesn't know that we're doing this, so tweet Chiefs Kingdom to Jace Andrews. Well, welcome him. His first day is actually tomorrow, Friday, but you guys will see him on the Chiefs Report very, very soon, and I'll still be involved helping that process, so it's not. this isn't my last video, but... Um, I'm excited. You guys should be excited. Don't go anywhere. We're still going to bring you daily content. And send Jace a warm welcome because I think he's going to be a good fit. All right, uh, let's get to a loser of Chiefs training camp, Chris Jones. And uh, look, the main reason he's a Chiefs training camp loser isn't necessarily because he didn't show up. It's because he still hasn't gotten a contract, right? I mean, that's the whole reason you hold out. You want a new deal, and that has not come yet. He wants a new deal. The Chiefs want to give him a new deal, but clearly the two sides are too far apart on a potential contract extension. He is under contract for this year, so we'll see if the Chiefs call his bluff, right? I mean, is he willing to uh, uh, play week one without a new deal and play this year out? I don't know. I guess time will tell on that front. Now, it's kind of become a theme here on the Chiefs report. It's like, what's Chris Jones tweeting? Is he trolling the fans? Who knows? Uh, he's a very big religious guy, so tweeted out, thank you, God, earlier this morning. I don't take that really for anything. I think that's more of he woke up and tweeted this out. Uh, this one was interesting. He tweeted at former Chief Taba Ali, said, I love you. I'm grateful for you. Hashtag thank you, God, again. So, um, Interesting to tweet uh, at his handle, so uh, hard to know what that means. But uh, in terms of like where we go from here, I'm not really sure. I mean, I 
still want to pay Chris Jones. Like, my feelings haven't changed. I think the Chiefs need to pay him. Now, I understand if he's wanting to, like, have the biggest defensive contract of all time, clearly top Aaron Donald and all these things, why the Chiefs would be hesitant. But at the same time, like, your defensive line is below average without him. I mean, there's just no doubt about it. So hopefully he's out there and playing. Hopefully it's with the new deal. Uh, we'll have to wait and see where it goes from here with Chris Jones. Uh, another loser here. Keep you guys on your toes. Chiefs cornerbacks, uh, both with a combination of injuries and with play at times as well. Uh, the Chiefs CB room has kind of been battered a little bit here uh, during training camp. You kind of look uh, here. Nazi Johnson tore his ACL. He was having a great start to training camp. That was unfortunate. He's out for the year. Legarius Sneed hasn't practiced hardly at all as he's been dealing with the knee injury. Now, I think he'll be ready for week one, but that's probably going to be one of those things that lingers all season without a surgery. Nick Jones fractured his fingers, the seventh round pick from this year, so we'll see if that impacts when he's going to be able to play. And then Trent McDuffie, who I'm still very high on. I'm not panicking. He played well last year, first round pick. But he did struggle against the Saints, gave, gave up a big completion to Michael Thomas and got beat by rookie A.T. Perry for a touchdown. Now, the good news is, as you look at the Chiefs uh, cornerback depth chart here, is it's a position of strength and depth, in my opinion. We saw last year your top three there, McDuffie, Watson, and Sneed, and Josh Williams all get a lot of playing time and all play well, uh, and you still do have good depth. But uh, if Sneed's knee injury becomes like a like a – problem like if he's missing games or if he's clearly hampered by that that really could change things I mean your depth could all of a sudden not feel that deep if you know what I'm saying so uh, we'll see I'm not panicking about this but I think uh, if you're Andy Reid and Steve Spagnuolo and Brett Beach if you're evaluating how training camp went you're probably not loving the injuries you've taken at corner and uh, at times the play as well now, if you love the Kansas City Chiefs, get the KC's going down in the comment section below. Spam KC. The regular season is almost here. We got another preseason game coming up on Saturday. So if you love the Chiefs, type KC. Let's go back to the winner column. Donovan Smith, uh, the left tackle, who that signing came with missed reaction, right? Or uh, because... He did not play well last year for the Bucs. It was easily the worst year of his career. Now, he was playing through a foot injury. He said that, uh, you know, he chose to play through that, but he was nowhere near 100% last year, which led to uh, worse play. And, you know, we had to see if that was true or not. But the reports out of camp have been positive. I haven't seen a single report of, like, oh, Donovan Smith is getting torched. He's getting beat consistently. And even though it was limited snaps, I think he played nine snaps, the starting offensive line. Uh, didn't give up a pressure. Was good in the run game. PFF graded him well. Uh, small sample size, but I think that's good as well. I think you can at least feel comfortable with him on the left side of this offensive line at first. Is he going to be at all pro? I don't think so. But with how solid the rest of this group is, I think Donovan Smith can hold his own. Uh, the way I viewed the tackle positions is he's going to be a little bit worse than Orlando Brown was, but Jawan Taylor is going to be a lot better than Andrew Wiley was, and you have the same interior. So at worst, it's a net even, and at best, I think this offensive line can actually be a little bit better here in 2023. Another winner is Sky Moore, back to the wide receiver position. Uh, didn't do much in the uh, preseason opener, but at camp, he's clearly taken a step forward, in my opinion. You hear how Mahomes talks about him. You hear from himself the confidence he exudes coaches are talking about him uh you know I said it a few weeks ago and I'll say it again one of my bold predictions is I think Sky Moore among all these receivers will actually lead the team in receiving among receivers Kelsey will still lead the entire team but uh you kind of have a mosh pit of receivers right like you don't have a clear number one and I think that's okay as long as Kelsey continues to be Kelsey just have a bunch of complimentary pieces and I think Moore is ready to be that guy that we thought he could be coming out of Western Michigan he's a smooth route smooth route runner he can create separation can play on the outside play in the slot so uh, it would not surprise me at all if he led the receivers in receiving uh, just behind Travis Kelsey what do you guys think who is the Chiefs best wide receiver um, just best pure wide receiver. I think Kadarius Toney's the most talented. Um, I think Rasheed Rice has the ability to get there. I don't know if he's there yet, uh, but let us know who is the Chiefs' best wide receiver right now. Some more Chiefs winners from training camp. Patrick Mahomes, I mean, 
it's kind of weird to say, but the guy just seems to get better and better every single year, uh, spreading the ball around to all these new weapons. Rasheed Rice, he had a strong camp, the rookie receiver. So did Felix and DK Uzoma. It took a little bit for him to get going, but uh, considering he missed OTAs and minicamp as he recovered from th thumb surgery, I think he's ready to make an impact. He started to get some reps with the ones with Charles Aminahue set to be suspended for six games. Uh, Wanya Morris, uh, the rookie tackle out of Oklahoma, I think he's ready to be the swing tackle. Played well against the Saints, I thought. So we'll see where he ends up on the depth chart, but he's obviously going to make this team. Denaret Prince didn't play that great against the Saints, but the camp has been really solid. I think he ends up on the 53 as well. Uh, some Chiefs losers from training camp. A lot. Some of this is injury related, uh, although not in the first two cases. Clyde edwards Zolaire, I think had a fine camp, but to be in the winner category, I think he really needed to pop, and you were hoping for that as a Chiefs fan, right? To either a be able to contribute at a higher level this year, or b create some trade value. I'm not sure that happened. Justin Watson, he's going to make this team, especially with Nico Remigio getting banged up, but nothing really stood out to me. I think guys like uh, Richie James and Justin Ross clearly had better camps. Tershawn Wharton came back from the ACL, but retweaked the knee, so we'll see where it goes from here. Charles Aminahue get a six-game suspension, not necessarily due to his play, but missing him for a third of the season, that's going to hurt. And then Joshua Kando, who was a fifth-round pick a couple of years ago, especially with a minute who getting banged up, an opportunity, or uh, getting suspended, an opportunity to stand out and maybe have a role this year when he hasn't in his first two seasons. Didn't really pop in training camp, so uh, that's a disappointment for him. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's Chiefs report. Again, show the new guys some love. Jace Andrews underscore on Twitter. Give him a follow. Tweet Chiefs Kingdom at him uh, to show him some love. I'm excited for him to be on board. And uh, welcome, Jace, to the channel as we'll start to integrate him very soon here on the Chiefs report.